right, I'm going to announce my new website thing. So as some of you may know, I've got mypartsbin.com, which is a free component trimmer site, which I've built recently. And I've been playing around a little bit here and there and just tweaking things here and there, and it's, it's okay. Now the idea of this is to have an inventory system that I could use and maybe share it with other people and let them use it as well. I don't care what the people are storing on there, it's their business, I'm not looking, it's whatever, it doesn't matter. All right. So you've got the parts inventory page, and this is just some demo stuff I've got set up on here, I'm, not, I'm still playing around with it. And you know, just listing parts, and these are free form fields, you can put anything you want in these, in these text boxes here. These are pre-selected types, so um, you've got some different options there. Quite a few different options actually, but this is going off the bottom of the page, so you can't see it all. Um, which, if I select one, it should jump an option. At. Okay, there's the other side. Okay, so this is stuff I'll just put in. There may be stuff which needs to be added, it's not a problem. Okay, um, so that's that side. Now, what I wanted to do a part of it was to actually have an open source version of this. So I finally got that built, and here it is. All right, so open source my parts bin. You can download this and run it on your own web server, be it locally on your own machine, or if it's put it on your own website and run it on there. Up to you. Don't care. You can use it. All right, free to, free to use. No problem. Not for commercial use, really. I'm not really looking for people ripping me off and using my work to make money from. This is for personal use only. All right, so if you're a hobbyist or a maker or something like that, and you want some way of keeping track of your parts, then by all means use it. If you're commercial, I suppose you could maybe use it, but I don't want anyone trying to sell it or make money from this, okay? That is not allowed. Now, so it's basically, this open source version is almost identical to the, the hosted website, which I have, okay? You can download inventory from one and upload it to the other and vice versa. So if you need to back up your local inventory onto my site, as a, as a backup feature, then you can do that. You can just download, export the inventory from here using this link, just there, and then you can come over to this one here, and you can import the inventory, All right? And then you can just upload the inventory here. Inventory here, you want to say it, okay? I tend to drop my letters a bit. So you can do it both ways around. You can export from the site to your local system, and you can go from your local system up to the site, okay? The database structure I'm not 100% set on, right? It's there. I think it's basically complete. But if someone's got a better suggestion about how to structure it to make it more universal, maybe to make it compatible with other systems that are out there, I'm open to that. You know, it may be that you can have a different uploader for different kinds of systems and it will just sort it out as it goes, right? That's possible. But I haven't done any of that sort of stuff yet. Right now, it's got a basic system which works. So if you go to my parts bin, you can go to download open source version. And as you can see at the bottom here, it will download the file, right? That's the file there. And that will generate this local website, which has got the open source logo on it here too, right? That's what you've got to do, right? So there are obviously some configuration things you need to do. You need to have a PHP server, and it also needs to be running MySQL. Um, those are the two things it actually requires. Um, you have to set up a database on a server and um, upload the SQL file to that server. Let me just get the file up and I'll show you what I'm actually talking about. Alright, so I'll pull the folder in. In a second, let me just sort something out. The view's not quite right. Go. So here's the folder. Okay. Now, as you can see, I'm running on a test website right now. But this is the actual directory structure. There's a few things you have to set up. I've got the readme in here to help guide you along. But here's the database, the actual table structure here, mypartsdb.sql. All right, that's just the SQL file. So once you've got your database set up, you can import this file. So I'll open it up and I'll show you what's in it. Okay, so here's the database structure. It just, this basically sets up your tables. All right. Um, there's actually a bit more, but let's about screen this. Let's make it a bit smaller so I can scroll. Okay, so it creates the tables, and um, there's very little to them. And that you, you just import that in using PHP, my admin, once you've got your database set up. 
So yeah, select your database in PHP Admin, in import this into it, and that will set up your tables, and that's it. Okay. And then all you got to do in your config file, which is this one here, shrink this down again so you can see. Bad preparation. Sorry about that. Um, please excuse my coding. You probably won't like some of it. I, I'm I'm self-taught. Okay, so you may not like some of the ways I do things. Anyway, so this is the config file, and in here you have to set up this information here. So the server, in my case, is well. In this case, I'm doing it generally as localhost. It could be 127.0.0.1, or it could even be your website. If you put it onto a website instead and host it on your own system, you could put your web address in there, potentially. But this is mainly the address of the database server. Okay, that's the intention here. Database server address. Now, obviously, then you got to put your database name or whatever's configured for that. The username and the password for the database access. Obviously, you need to have those things in there, those credentials, in order for the PHP to be able to communicate with the database. Okay, and then once those are in there, you can still upload this to the site. You don't have to worry about anything else. It's all pre-configured. Um, you then upload basically everything here to the site. Exclude this one. That's just my own config file, which is for my site, which is configured for my site. So it's private because I don't want to show you that one by mistake. Um, like it matters a much, I'm going to be deleting it eventually anyway. So it's a test site. But um, and also the SQL you got to import to your database, as I said before. And you just upload this whole section here to the top level of your site um, to your web hosting, whether it's remote or on your local machine. You put it in that top directory, and it will just work. Well, it should just work. Okay. So I thought I'd just do a little video on that and introduce you to what I've done and try and guide you through it a little bit. Um, I do have readme here, which is part of the file. Um, again, it's a bit bigger than the window because I've, yeah, get, get guesstimated where the recording size is going to be. So I just just guide you through it. Um, just basic descriptions of what you do. It's, it's basically what I just said. All right, so it's pretty simple, really. If you've got experience with websites and that sort of stuff, you should find it's pretty straightforward. If it's new to you, then you might be a little bit more learning involved, and you may have to do some research on Google and stuff like that. But for me, it's pretty straightforward, I believe it is anyway. And I will do updates on this from time to time as I find little bugs or things that could be improved and that sort of stuff. It will happen. Um, I try, want to avoid changing the database structure. So it would be these main pages which change. If the database has to be changed, I'll, I'll create a, an updater script which will update the database for you so you don't have to do anything. Okay, That will be my intention to make it nice and simple. If I ever do anything like that anyway. Okay. Um, so yeah, there we go. We're done. So I hope you found it interesting. Go and download it. Oh, that's the wrong site. Oh. How many sites anyway? Yeah. So the main site here, the main website has the download of the open source version. So go and get it. Have a play. Tell me what you think. And uh, share the video too. Make sure people know about this. Share this video. People may want to know about this open source system and the way of doing it. I've tried to keep it extremely simple. I mean, obviously, here's the infantry on this site. And, um, you know, I've tried to keep it simple. That's been my intention. Editing, that sort of stuff. Deleting is just as easy. I want to delete a file. Click that, click delete, and it's gone. <laughs> or cancel, whatever. But it works the same way on the remote system, on the open source, and on the website. Okay? So they're identical in the way they function. And that's my intention, to try and keep it all nice and simple and easy. I want a simple interface. I don't want to have all these complex multiple layers of pages and selections and presets and all this other stuff. It's, it, I don't want to go down there. Right? That is not what I want. I want a nice simple system which anyone can just jump on and use without much work. So, I hope you found that interesting. And subscribe, click the bell icon if you've not already done that. And I'll catch you later on. See you next video. Bye. Yeah, waving. <laughs>